Welcome back. In most of my videos, we dive into the mysterious architecture found in the old world. We are examining buildings which appear absolutely massive and their stories are somewhat cloudy. Now, a lot of the time, the stories that were given in the narrative don't really do the building justice. But in today's video, we're going to discuss a building that, while it still may be clouded in some mystery, has been at the forefront of architectural discussions for the last 1500 years. This is, of course, the Hagia Sophia, and when we consider phantom timelines or at the very least, the fall of grand architecture after Rome fell, it seems that there was about a thousand year period until architecture like this continued again. Now, that's attributed to the rediscovery of many ancient works, but when you look at the Hagia Sophia, it absolutely shatters what we've come to expect. We look at many different old Roman buildings, and for the most part, they are in ruins, and they're said to have been discovered and excavated in those dilapidated conditions. But this one building, which still stands in all of its original glory, seems to defy both time and logic, and it's absolutely quintessential to the history of architecture. The Hagia Sophia stands today in Istanbul, Turkey, but when it was first built, Istanbul was known as Constantinople. This is the epitome of the Byzantine architecture. Today, I just want to share with you a little bit about the narrative and show you some more detailed photographs, including at the end of the video, the oldest photographs of the Hagia Sophia that I could find. Diving into the narrative, we're told this Hagia Sophia was a cathedral that was built in 532 and it was sanctioned by the Roman Emperor Justinian I as the official state church for the Holy Roman Empire. There are two architects given, and I'm probably going to butcher these names, but we have Isidor of Miladis and Anthemius of Trails. It's said that Anthemius died early in the construction in the first year, 532. However, Isidor has a rather interesting narrative himself. I won't get too much into it in this video, but if you're familiar with Freemasonry at all, or even the idea of Gematria, you should definitely look into this Isidore narrative. He is basically credited with heavily spreading and using the ideas of Euclid. One of the works that he used heavily was Euclid's Elements, which was a mathematical treatise composed of 13 books. Now, this is an ancient word, which would go on to basically shape Freemasonry. It contained different mathematical properties and algorithms that could be used to create certain shapes and would show you how these different equations could be used to calculate what a building could and could not support. It also included the 47th problem of Euclid, which in itself defined how a right angle could be created and would also impact exactly how Freemasonry would develop. So I highly recommend reading the history of Isidore if you have a chance. I will link it down below. Now back to the narrative. Hagia Sophia was the world's largest cathedral for nearly 1,000 years, not being topped until the Seville Cathedral opened in Spain in the early 1500s. Hagia Sophia became the cathedral that is said all subsequent Orthodox churches would be modeled after. Basically, in a nutshell, we're told that nearly every Christian church would have some form of their architecture or the features of their architecture that was derived from the Hagia Sophia. Domes, especially, seem to have arose from the designs of the Hagia Sophia and conquered the architectural world soon after its creation. What makes the Hagia Sophia an absolute masterpiece in my eyes is the way that it combines not only Christian architecture, but also later Middle Eastern or Arabic architecture, and it became an important spot for both of those religions, and I'm going to get into that just a little bit. Not only was the Hagia Sophia influential on all later Christian cathedrals, but it's also written in this narrative that the Ottoman domed mosques and even earlier Middle Eastern mosques were influenced heavily by the designs of the Hagia Sophia. The dome of the Hagia Sophia inspired Mehmed the Conqueror to construct many other domed buildings throughout his Ottoman Empire. And 
Mehmed the Conqueror was the leader of the Ottoman Empire when it took over Constantinople. The Hagia Sophia is just as important to the Muslim faith as it is to the Christian faith, and the same can be said about its importance in architecture. Once Mehmed the Conqueror took over Hagia Sophia and Constantinople, this is when the four large spires were added, and these are also very beautiful, and they add to the absolute uniqueness of the design. This Byzantine masterpiece appears to be the link from one culture to the next, and the tie between them is architecture. Now, this is where we get into a really interesting concept within the Christian portion of the narrative about Hagia Sophia. We're told that Hagia Sophia was dedicated to logic, more specifically to logos, and that is a concept that is pre-existent to the second member of the Holy Trinity, meaning logos is the idea that God had the ability right from the beginning of time to create the chosen one or the son. So the whole idea of being is that there was at any given time a pre-existent source to the second member of the Holy Trinity. And that wisdom or the ability to be able to create that is known as Logos. And Logos also moonlights as another word for wisdom. Now, in the narrative, they give the example of John 1.1 which is, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So, it's a bit esoteric, but I thought that was worth sharing, especially when we discuss that the patron saint of the original Hagia Sophia was actually Christ himself. Another interesting aspect within this narrative is we're told that the patron saint's day, or the celebration of Hagia Sophia, occurred on December the 25th. Now, what makes it interesting is the vastly different calendars that we have throughout time and throughout the years, throughout all these different empires and people who ruled this area, whether they were Christian or of a different faith, it all appears to be at different timelines within their own narratives, meaning that they were not all on the same calendar or on the same timeline. So it's interesting to me that we're told, even dating back to 1500 years ago, when the Hagia Sophia was completed, when it was still a Christian cathedral, that the patron saint day was December the 25th. I've heard throughout my life different stories about in ancient times that Christmas or the birth of Christ was celebrated on different dates depending on which culture you were reading about. Now, it's interesting to me that within this Byzantine culture or the original Holy Roman Empire, we're told even 1500 years ago, even with all the different calendars and all the different adjustments that were made, that the patron saint Christ was celebrated on December 25th at the Hagia Sophia. So it just makes you wonder, how much influence did the Hagia Sophia really have? Is it really a top to bottom influence throughout our culture? But I digress. Looking into this name a little bit more, we're also told Sophia is a Latin translation of a Greek word which means wisdom. Now, in the narrative, it says in roughly 1200, Hagia Sophia and the town of Constantinople became part of the Latin Empire after the Fourth Crusades. Then, the Byzantine Empire returned in the 1260 region to try and reclaim Hagia Sophia. Within the narrative, we then have a long lapse of time where they don't really discuss anything about the history until the 1450s. And this is when Constantinople is taken over by the Ottoman Empire and Mehmed the Conqueror. So at this time, it's written that the massive cathedral of Hagia Sophia is then converted into a mosque. In the narrative, it says that most of the contents of the cathedral are gutted, and the mostly Christian relics are destroyed. And it says, basically, that the Hagia Sophia remained in this state roughly until 1935, when it changed from a mosque into a museum by order of the Turkish government. So, we have this long period of time 
roughly 500 years that the Hagia Sophia stood as one of the most important and massive mosques in Turkey. And I just found that to be really interesting because they don't really tell us what happened in that 500 year time period. Now, Hagia Sophia, like I said, was turned into a museum by the Turkish government in 1935. However, in the year of 2020, it was actually reverted back into a mosque and all the museum quality items, basically all of the Christian related items that were allowed back into the mosque were removed once again. So this is much like it was in the old world or 500 years ago. This is again, a massive mosque in Turkey. And I just found that to be really interesting. We always hear the old saying, history repeats itself. Well, in this case, it actually appears that it has. So that's a brief history of this unimaginable building. To say that it had an influence on later architecture would be the understatement of a lifetime. My hope here was to inspire you to do your own reading and research on this convoluted history. It's an absolutely breathtaking building and the mosque, the dome, the pillars, the spires, everything about it and noting that the age of it really makes it one of the most important buildings in the entire world. To understand how important, we must first look at the Christianity aspect being the largest building on earth when it was completed and the largest cathedral in the world for nearly 1000 years. Then we look at the Muslim history and it became an area of pilgrimage and it displayed the power and the growth and the creativity of the Ottoman Empire displaying some of the more amazing architecture that would go on to shape and influence the rest of the Middle East in later years. It's just absolutely amazing to me, almost impossible to quantify just how important this building is. So I just thought I would share that information with you, a bit of the old current narrative, and we're just going to now look at some of the most important and unique features of the Hagia Sophia I'm also going to include some aspects of the rediscovered artwork. During the time that the Hagia Sophia was a museum from 1935 until 2020, they had a period of excavation and renovation where they actually rediscovered a lot of old relics that they thought were lost. So some of these are going to be mosaic artworks that you may be familiar with or you may recognize. but. When we look at the details of these mosaics, they become almost breathtaking because we see that each little detail is created by its own piece of tile. And it's just so fascinating. The attention to detail that go throughout this building from the artwork on the inside and the decor on the inside, which appears to be much like it was in the original building. We also then have the different artworks that are displayed throughout this building collected through time. And it's just absolutely fascinating to me. So we're going to look at these artworks. We're going to look at the oldest photographs I could find. Many of them were dated in the 1800s. There will be a few from the early 1900s, but you can really see all of the growth in the area. It all stems from Hagia Sophia. The ancient city of Constantinople and even the modern city of Istanbul really seemed to stem outward from this massive Hagia Sophia. It was the center of the city and for a long time it appeared to be the center of the old world and of architecture itself. It all comes from this one building, this amazing old world building. It's really the epitome of old world architecture. So I just thought that was fascinating. I wanted to share it with you. And if you have any information or comments about Hagia Sophia, I would love to hear them down below.